All right, thank you. We are back and I want to do a wrapping up video, just show you what we've done and bring this summer A session to a close. Um, but before I do that, let me talk about some problems with the stakeholder theory. Um, and uh, first, let me acknowledge, I think this is a powerful theory. If you want to rebut the Friedman Doctrine, right? Um, I think you have to go with the stakeholder theory. It is the most powerful, influential theory of business ethics out there. But that said, I'm a professor, right? I'm a scholar. I have to look at all sides. And so I want to share with you some criticisms of the stakeholder theory. One main criticism is, okay, once we identify who the stakeholders are, and let's just go through the list, right? A company, of course, the owners begin there, the shareholders, right? Of course, if we're talking about a corporation, the shareholders. Um, employees like Donald Trump, right? We have to protect jobs, protect American workers. Employees. I would argue your customers. Probably that is the most important, uh, one of the most important stakeholders, right? You want to uh, uh, build and sell products and services that really benefit your customers. Um, um, how about the communities in which your employees and customers live, right? You may have, especially if you're an industry that creates pollution, you want to take into account the community as well. Um, your suppliers, right? Um, people who extend credit to the company. The list can go on and on. It's a very powerful theory. But I'm going to tell you um, one weakness of the theory is that, I, I think it's a good theory, but one weakness is, I question whether companies really do the stakeholder theory stuff. If you look at the board of directors of every single major Fortune 500 company, every publicly traded company on the New York Stock Exchange or the NASDAQ, go to Facebook. Go to facebook.com slash corporate governance. Look at their board of directors. One of the things you're going to see, you're not, one of the things you're not going to see on any single board of directors is representation from ramp, rank and file workers, representation from consumer groups and consumers. Um, boards are going to be basically made up of other CEOs of other companies and the management team of the company. And so, you know, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. If companies were really, I'm going to call them out. If we're really about stakeholders, how come you don't have any other stakeholders on your board of directors, right? I'm not saying give them um, you know, full majority control, but why not give them a voice? Think of universities, think of USF, right? There's always a student representative on the board of trustees. Even though that student doesn't have, may not necessarily have voting rights or just one vote out of 10, but the point is the voice of students can be heard, right? So that's a good way of implementing stakeholder theory, but what about why don't corporations do the same if they say they're about ethics and social responsibility? Now, that criticism is not with the theory itself, it's just with the way that companies might be engaged in cheap talk, right? Saying they're about it, but not being about it, as they say. My other criticism, though, is actually goes to the theory itself. One problem with stakeholder theory is that it doesn't tell us how to weigh the interests of these various constituencies. Let me nail it down for you. Let's say, um, let's talk about the three major stakeholders, right, of any company. The owners, of course, we have to start there. They put the money in to make the company uh, get it up and running. Uh, the consumers, the user base, right? The people who are buying the products and services of the, of the, of the company and, uh, and the employees and the communities in which the employees live. I'm gonna just narrow it down, look at those basic three groups um, and ask, now ask, how do we weigh their interests? Is it one third each, you know? Um, are, are they equally weighted? I say that because I think about it, right? What happens then if there's a conflict among an interest among the various stakeholder groups? How do we adjudicate that conflict? Th that's a problem, right? If, if, if we haven't weighed, if we haven't assigned weights to each of the stakeholder groups, we're going to have a problem when we're trying to really implement the theory on the ground. The other problem is, is I would just say CSR, stakeholder theory, if you're going to assign the greatest weight to the owners, then CSR is a redundant theory. You don't need it, right? It's just window dressing. It's not doing any real work, right? Um, you may even say for consumers, well, markets, that's why we have markets, right? Competitive process. That's how you take into account the best interest of your consumers because if you don't, other companies will, right? Assuming there's free entry into, the, into that particular market. So 
those are some theoretical criticisms of the um, corp uh, corporate social uh, stakeholder model of corporate social responsibility. None of these models are perfect. I'll end on saying this. Probably what's really going on here is that businesses, the reality is, if you look at what they do and not what they say, they're all freedmen doctrine. They're all about making money. But if you think about it, right, sometimes the best way to make money is by um, being good, right? You do well for yourself by being good, by doing the right thing. Maybe you can expand markets, attract higher end customers, etc., by actually implementing you know, protecting your workers, um, implementing good business practices that take into account the stakeholders in reality. So they, so uh, what I'm saying here is that the Friedman doctrine and stakeholder theory need not be mutually incompatible. But there's lots of details to work out. How does the invisible hand really work? What happens when the invisible hand fails, right? And with stakeholder theory, what weights do we assign to the various stakeholders, to the various constituencies, um, and how do we adjudicate conflicts among those? All right, look, we've done a lot. Um, I'm going to do a wrap-up video, um, in uh, one more wrap-up video just to keep this one short. All right, and thank you for bearing with me.